As all my football players know, preparation is key. Or as my mother always says, the preparation is greater than the journey. And on this episode, we're at Rogers Athletic to see how they make the on-field practice tools to get you prepared for game day. I'm Leland, and welcome to Sports Dissected, the series. So I'm here with Mr. John Green, National Sales Manager at uh, Rogers Athletic. That's correct, Liam. How you doing? Good to see you. Nice to meet you today. You guys make, I mean, tons of equipment from game day preparation, game day equipment. Like, just explain some of the, the, the products you guys make. Uh, here at Rogers Athletic, I mean, we've been in business uh, almost 50 years, I would say. And we make a variety of products, especially for football practice. That's our primary product that we make here. Blocking sleds, chutes, dummies. For game day, we have a, a variety of products that we can help the school brand their brand onto the field with goal post pads, chain sets, crew vests. Yeah, we have a great variety of products, Liam. Thanks for asking. And let's step back a little bit. Explain um, one, your position, but then also your history with the company and how you've seen things kind of change and develop over the years. The business itself started in a Fieldstone garage up in Faro, Michigan. And I've seen it evolve, you know, from that, you know, it just kept growing and growing and growing where we just had one building and now we own five buildings. I can imagine you probably had your hands in a number of maybe developing or some of the products or Oh, ab absolutely. Let me give you a great example. Uh, right behind you right here, the Lev Sled. This is one of our iconic products that we developed. Everything was shoulder blocking forearm, nothing to do with the hands, okay? So they changed the rules to where you could use your hands to block people, but if your hands slid outside the cavity of the body and they, the referee saw a hand out here on your shoulder, mm -hmm. that was called flag. holding, boom, flag. <laughs> Okay, so what we wanted to do was we wanted to come up with a product that would work and train players to be able to drive people off the football, get up underneath their shoulder pads, and then leverage them up onto their toes. If you cannot break the stalemate here once the ball snapped, you're not gonna be able to leverage it, okay? Uh -huh. So that's why this sled is so special. Obviously, you guys make improvements. Do you guys listen to the feedback from the coaches, from players, or is it kind of an in-house like development? It's a combination, really, of us listening to the coaches and then giving it to the in-house development team. We designed this sled for defensive coaches. So what they like to do, they like to get in here and get a hold of a guy, okay, and then they get that separation. Okay, and they move, they're trying to move this guy and they're trying to find the ball. Okay, trying to find the ball. Move their feet, try to find the ball, get and go. What are some of the products that you kind of are, are amazed by that, that you guys can make now? I think the mobile MVP dummy is a great lead into that question because as the evolution of football is changing, blocking is changing, rules are changing, we had to come out with the MVP to get it ramped up where it's going, you know, 16 miles an hour. You know, to where you could tackle it to the ground and it pops back up like a pop-up dummy. It still goes. It still goes. Wow. I don't know if you want to see it run or not. I can show it for you. Actually, um, you got me fired up. You were hitting the sleds, hitting the dummies. I want to try some of this stuff out. I want to, I want to get dressed and uh, let's get it cracking. Let's do it. Let's have some fun, Leland. Let's, let's do it. You're on. All right, buddy. Here you go. All right. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Let's try it. Okay, here we go. First round, here we go. Are we let's going get, on your hut? Yep, let's get, let's get in our stance. Three point. Set, hit. Okay. You tried to stand up. Hands inside, thumbs up. Eyes on eyes. Drive and race. Here we go. Ready, set, hit. Nope. You're ah! Good. You're getting there. Am I getting close? Three times a charm. Okay. Strike it hard with the hands and punch it inside. Here we go. Ready, set, hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Give me five, man. There you go. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Hey, let's work on this next one over here. Now, when I have Leland attack this pad, keep the separation. Okay. And you're going to move, and then I'm going to give Ryan a direction to go. You're not going to see it. Okay. Okay. And then you got to shed this pad, being throwing it, shedding it, and attacking him. Here we go. Ready, set, hit. That was a little slow. So what I was noticing when I had it up, it was kind of in my in my way. So do I have do I need to lower it a little bit to look over it? Yeah, it's how yeah, and you got to okay. move it. They call this the peekaboo. Mm -hmm. Okay, so peekaboo. So, so I'm here, I'm engaged with this guy, and I'm trying to find out where that where's that ball carrier, you know, and then to get rid of that guy and then go get him. Ready, set, hit. Good, did the peekaboo, and you went and got him. Hey. Five on that one, man. I'm good. I, I don't know who's coaching this guy up, but he's getting better. <laughs> so we got a, uh, a linebacker shooting a gap. Going to take the guy down in the backfield. 
Okay, with her head off to the side, taking the head out of the game, tackling safely. Here we go, ready, set, hit. Nice, very good. Let's do another, another right shoulder, hit. Nice, ready, set, hit. Nice, nice, nice. nice. Woo! I like the velocity. I like the aggression, and it's, and it's, and it's great. We're, not, we're, we're getting our reps in, and we're not using live people here. Here we go. Ready, set, hit. There we go. All right. We can live with that one. Dump shot is at home. Let's have a helmet, pads, and sports without safety insurance. Now we're going to work on getting you a movement target. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Ooh. Hoo -hoo. We'll come back here and. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Back pedal, okay, okay. working your back pedal and, and then turn your hips, you know, when that thing's parallel to you and run with it. Okay. Okay. You ready? Okay, here we go. Ready, set, hit. <laughs> get, get. <laughs> here we go. Ready, set, hit. Turn, run, 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 run. Oh. Whoa. I didn't mean to hit the ball there. All right, let's try to tackle this thing. Get good uh, two point bent knee position, get ready to attack. Okay, here we go. Ready, set. Stay down. Nice. Hit. Oh! oh. <laughs> yeah, so this is like real game speed. Yes, that's exactly right. Now you see what I'm talking about. Uh, when guys see this on video, they don't really realize how fast it is. You, you know have to really mean? commit like in, like in a real game. Yeah, that's exactly what it's supposed to replicate. Real game speed. Here we go. Ready, set, hit. There we go. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, coach, as you can see, I'm out of breath. I'm beat, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> On a scale of, let's say, let's say one to two, how did I do today? Well, Leland, if two is the highest, I'm gonna give you a two today and I'm gonna tell you why. Because right. I know you haven't been outfitted in a long time and you haven't tackled or practiced football in a long time and you did a great job today. You had some great tutelage as well, just so you know. Now, I just have, I just have one final request. Yes, sir. You've been around the industry for a long time. I can imagine you have some nice connections with NFL programs. Tell them that you got a nice little six foot outside linebacker ready to ready to go. You, you got me? All right, yeah, yeah, you got, you got good drop speed. You can get to your zone. So yeah, hey, I'll be on the phone tonight with some of my friends and we'll see if we can't get you hooked up. I appreciate All it, right, Coach. Brother. Good seeing you. Thank you. Thanks, Leland. All right, guys, so I'm here with uh, Mr. Nathan Rogers, president of Rogers Athletic, correct? Correct. Yes, got sir. it. Thank you for coming today. Well, what, what's kind of the story on how how we got to this 160,000 square foot facility? Yeah, this one building's 160. So my great grandfather was a shoe cobbler during the 1930s, during the Great Depression, and he found a niche by going to the local schools, and he'd get their old shoes and their helmets and their jerseys during the off season. He'd bring them back to his little shop, and he'd fix them up, and then he'd take them during the season back to the coaches. And then when my dad took over the business in 1967, when his father passed away young, he had a relationship with the head coach of the Detroit Lions. And Joe Schmidt was the coach at the time, and he came to my dad and said, hey, you can work in foams and vinyls and other materials. I want to teach heads-up blocking. That turned into football sleds, and that kept evolving over the years. So uh, what can we expect to see uh, at this facility today? So in this facility, what we're going to see is we do everything. We try to build as much as we can ourselves. So we'll bring in the raw steel, you'll see it come in on the crane, then we'll cut it, we'll bend it, we've sent it through our welding cells, and then we'll send it through our powder coat line, and then do our final assembly. So all the parts come here in the raw material, and they leave in finished products. I'm assuming a lot of technology too. There's a lot of technology inside. Hope you like it. Let's go check it out. All right, thank you. So whether small pieces like that or big pieces behind us, we bring in the raw steel and aluminum to be able to begin the process. So that part, once it goes through a machining operation, will become a little linkage part for one of the football sleds when you hit them and lift them, that that all pivots on. So what we've learned to do is bring parts in and make them ourselves, so that way we can control the outcome. How do you guys even, even move it around the, the facility? So, you so can even... we use cranes, the whole building's underneath crane on this end where our raw materials come in. So that way nobody's trying to lift up a 6,000 pound bundle or do anything unsafe, but we can pick up material and either with fork trucks or other cranes and move it through the facility without anybody getting injured. The next thing we'll see is where we actually go through the cutting operations and start to whittle those parts down into what the usable form is. Let's get cutting. Let's get cutting. All right. Watching this thing work, 
I can see why it's your favorite. Yeah. Explain to me what I'm looking at. It's, so everything's kind of moving together. So everything's moving together. So what you've got in the back is the, the chalk or the heart of the machine grabs the tube and it brings it and it measures it. How big is it? A rectangle? Is it a square? Is it a round? And that knows how long that part is and then it pushes it in and then in there is where you can see the laser. So as the chuck in the back is rotating it, the laser is cutting. And then when it comes out, gotta make sure it's not hot. It, it can cut out simple shapes, it's got notches in it, it can go into the next tube. And so when the welders drop it into the next part, it sell fixtures and it, it's exactly in the right spot every time. So it's a very accurate way to produce parts really quick. He's bending this steel. Yep. That's a half inch thick, correct? Okay, yep. So what that does is that takes those parts we saw get cut in the laser, and then he puts them over here and it bends them into flanges and brackets that we can then weld onto a football sled or our shoots that go on the field and create those neat little parts. Okay, so earlier I told you guys not to try this at home. This, you can't even try at home, right? right. <laughs> Let's give it a go. All right, so I'm going. Here, push it. So it hits the back plate. Oh wow. <laughs> Look at that. How did I do guys? You made your first part. Alright. Look at that. It's a good part. I'm good. Good part. Am I hired? You're hired. So all the parts have been cut and bent, and then we put them into these fixtures to help keep everything perfectly straight. This is a barricade platform that you use for crowd control at a sporting event. So the operator has already laid in all the pieces, and he's connected them with welds at this point. How can you tell the, a good piece of welding and a, a bad piece? I have a little sickness for welding, I love it. But if you look in close at the welds, you can see how it's discolored on the top and the bottom, above and below that weld. That means it's heated up those other plates and melted the two pieces of metal together with the weld. And, and it all depends how hot it is and how fast he's moving. You could actually burn through the material or not penetrate it enough and the weld can fail. And in our world, we don't want welds to fail because that means somebody could get hurt or pierced or, or a barricade like this could fold and hurt somebody if it's not welded properly. So having good qualified welders is really a key to make sure everything stays together. What we're seeing here is the parts have been um, cut and bent and welded, and then they come to this spot, and this is where all the parts get hung to go into the paint line. So now this is, they, they set them up, we know how high they have to be, and this begins the process of our painting operation. So what we have here is we look down this line, we have seven different stations that wash the parts, similar to an automatic car wash. The first station's an acid, and it takes off all the dirt and the oil. Even though that doesn't look dirty, it's got, you, you rub it, you get black on your hands. It takes all that organic material off. The next station's a rinse, where it goes through a regular rinse, and then it goes through an alkaline wash that takes all the oil and the, the laser scale off these parts as we cut it on our lasers we saw earlier. It leaves a scale on there, and we have to get that scale off. There's a sealer in place as well towards the end that helps seal that steel now that's been, it's wet, but it keeps, it keeps it from rusting. And then once it goes through there, then it goes through an oven at 180 degrees, warms the steel up and dries all the water out. So there's a science to this. A lot Every of step. Every step. How, how do you think your, your great grandfather will respond if he walked into this factory and saw like all oh, the stuff man. you guys it have? It kind of gives me goosebumps thinking about that. But I think he'd be proud. My great grandfather was a shoe cobbler, and so to see him turn into this where we're actually making components in a mass production to help the game improve, I think he'd be proud. So, as the parts come in this room, they've been washed by our wash tanks to get the steel really clean, get all the oil and rust off. And then they go in this area, and the paint gets applied electrostatically and clings to the steel. And so, here, if you look at it, the the paint's just a powder. We can see that, it comes right off. And once it goes through and gets applied, it goes into this room where it gets heated up to 400 degrees. So once it goes into here, that powder starts to gel into a liquid. And then the, the oven and behind those bright lights is 400 degrees, and that bakes the paint to create a, a coating that's completely finished and dried when it comes out the other end. 
In this facility, we'd bring in the vinyl and the foam and make it to make a dummy. So we have to take these big rolls of vinyl and cut the shapes and patterns out of it that make a football dummy. And then we run them through our sewing machines and sew in the zippers, sew the pattern. And then we stuff it together where we put the foam inside the vinyl cover, zip it up like you did so nicely. Oh, look at that. There this we go. Natural. Wait a second. Oh, Got it. yeah. Boom. And then we merge the orders together here with these football sleds. And we saw earlier today where we cut the steel, bent it, welded it, painted it, and then they're sitting here in a big stack ready to go. It's been a pleasure. Yes, sir. I, I've learned a lot, seen a lot. Uh, I hope you guys are, were entertained and uh, <laughs> got beat up by Coach Green. He got to stuff some dummies, bend some parts. I'll be sore tomorrow, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we usually are after he works us out like that. But uh, thanks, thanks for inviting us out. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, showing us all around, and uh, we look forward to seeing what you guys uh, have planned in the future. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. When it comes to locker rooms, it's only two types of people. There's everyone else, and then there's Shield Lockers. Since 2014, Shield's number one priority has been to disrupt all industry standards by blurring the line between traditional function and modern masterpiece. With their use of non-traditional materials such as solid surface, they're able to set their clients' imagination free. The Brooklyn Nets and Kansas Jayhawks trusted them, and you should too. Visit shieldlockers.com to unlock your dreams. But beware, because this isn't your father's locker room.